enter Jess's hotel room late afternoon. Marie knocks on the door and Jess opens it, wearing nothing but an untied robe. What a nice surprise. What the hell are you doing here? The Caribbean son agrees with you. You look great. Why are you here? To get you back. I don't want to lose you. You just don't want to lose. You could never resist my body, even when we were fighting. You couldn't resist anybody. That's why we're fighting. You know she'll end it with you once the press gets wind of it. Is winning worth that much to you, that you would try to take this chance away from me? I just want things to be different. Things are different. Leave now, or I'll get a restraining order for following me here. Then I'll use every penny I have to sue you for hiring a photographer. Money can buy a lot of things. It won't buy you that actress. Exterior, outside the restaurant, night. Vince, Marie, and Lisa wait outside the restaurant for the rest of the family to arrive. It'll be okay, Mayor. If she doesn't show up, you're my date tonight. Why do I feel like this might be a wedding rehearsal dinner? Well, <laughs> because Uncle Tony is convinced he'll marry Catherine before we leave Jamaica, even if it's not legal. Lauren arrives, dressed to kill, with her mother, Catherine, and Uncle Tony. As they approach, Vince puts his arm protectively around his sister. You made it. Lauren nods, still appearing like she might bolt, while her mother, Catherine, watches them. Interior restaurant night. Uncle Tony is oblivious to what is happening between Marie and Lauren, but Catherine keeps a watchful eye on her daughter. Marie mouths the words, are you okay? And Lauren nods, but she is not fooling anyone. Her eyes begin to fill, and she abruptly leaves the table. She's not trying to hurt me, especially after what Jess pulled. How can I expect you to trust being with me won't screw up her life? Sounds to me like she'll never be ready. Scrape your shoe and move on. Marie and Vince glare at him. What? Bad advice? Later, Lauren returns to the table. Why is everyone so quiet? This is a special night. Uncle Tony finishes pouring champagne. Now that Lauren is back, let's raise our glasses in celebration of my complete joy. Catherine has put a, an end to my begging, which begins the first day, which began the first day we met, and was agreed to become my lovely wife. The wedding will be tomorrow. Salute. The table erupts with cheers. Ah. For a moment, Marie and Lauren are able to forget their situation. Imagine being lucky enough to find the love of your life, not once, but twice. They all clink glasses in a toast. Lauren hugs her mother, who wipes away her daughter's tears. I'm so happy for you, Mom. Lauren takes a deep breath, raises her drink in a toast as Dad quiets the table down so Lauren can speak. My mother is a lucky lady to have met such a gentle gentleman to share her life, her evenings, and to hold her hand on her morning walks. Lauren's voice cracks, trails off, tearful, as she tries not to look at Marie. Here's to both of you and the perfect life together you deserve. Everyone clinks their glasses. When Marie and Lauren's glasses touch, their eyes finally meet. They exchange sad smiles. Exterior, outside the restaurant, evening. The family is saying goodnight as Lauren makes a quick exit towards the beach alone. Lisa and Marie start to follow Lauren and she catches Marie by the arm. Let her go, Mayor. Marie stops and sadly nods yes in agreement. Lisa leaves her to join Vince who hugs Uncle Tony. Catherine walks over to Marie who is still watching Lauren as she disappears into the darkness of the beach. Marie puts on a brave face. I'm so happy for both you and my uncle. My daughter's been alone a long time. 
Maybe she needs someone to walk by her side. Maybe you too. Catherine hugs Marie. I want to be happy for the both of you, too. Marie nods, almost moves to go after her, and stops. This time, I think she has to come to me. I've always let my daughter make her own decisions. She was always so cautious that I never worried about her, even as a young girl, so responsible. I don't know what she told you about us. She said there was nothing for me to worry about. She's right. Whatever happened, it might be over. Catherine reaches out to take both of Marie's hands. Is it because I'm an old lady you're both are under the impression I would worry less about my daughter being alone? I always hoped my daughter would find the courage to put love first, even if she had to risk something to have it. What, what, what would you do if you were me? I love my daughter to bits. But I've been around your family enough to believe a Santora probably can't live a secret life. Catherine gives Marie a hug. Interior, Marie's hotel room. Later, same day. Marie and Vince pack up bricks of money bound with paper bands. These bills look, look impressive. It's not that much. It's a symbolic gift. Now let's settle this drama before Aunt Ayagi loses it. As if on cue, they hear yelling outside. Too late. They scramble to pack the bricks into a beach bag and hurry out the door. Exterior, poolside, early morning. The Santora family is by the pool at the hotel. There is a fight going on between Aunt Augie and Mom. How dare you? I'm only fighting to get what's rightfully mine. It was my mother that died, not yours. I took care of your mother every day because you- No one asked you to. She hated you too. Oh, she hated everyone. Okay, now let's calm down and go back to our drinks. Shut, Shut up, up Sal. Sal. This is between your sister and me. Stay out of it. Don't talk to my brother that way. He's a better man than you deserve for all the grief he says you cause him. I never said grief, exactly. A small crowd has gathered at the pool as Marie and Vince arrive. All right, all right, quiet down, I'm here. Aunt Aggie is a little riled up about the plan. You weren't supposed to discuss the plan. Now shut the hell up like you were supposed to and help me. Marie reaches into the bag and pulls out two bricks of money, which silence the family. She shoves the two bricks at Lisa as Aunt Augie starts to protest and Dad tries to shush her. Okay, hey, listen up. Marie tries to stop her, but Lisa easily keeps her away with a hand on, clamped onto Marie's entire face. If Marie did what Grandma wanted, you all would get squat, so I suggest everyone shut the F up now. Lisa, there are children around. They should shut the F up, too. <laughs> they do. The small crowd grows bigger, people enjoying the show as Lisa begins passing out bricks of cash, doing her best Oprah imitation, the first brick to Uncle Tony, then to Aunt Augie, who is still glaring at Dad. And you get a brick, and you get a brick, and you get a brick. Although this is not what Grandma wanted, I'm dividing all of the money equally by household. Since it's too much of a risk to travel with a lot of cash, there'll be plenty more where this came from, if you all behave yourselves. When Marie hands Mom a brick, Aunt Augie grabs... Marie's arm to stop her. When Marie jerks her arm away, she sends Aunt Augie toward the pool edge. She yelps, sends her walker flying, and she careens backward into the pool with a tremendous splash. Oh my God! 
The crowd gasped at the sight, but is quickly calmed by uh. Aunt Maggie's graceful dog paddling as her bright floral house coat billows in the water as if a gay paratrooper miscalculated a landing. Aggie is blinded by her dark helmet of hair pasted over her face, but underneath uh. this hair comes the sound of her snorting laughter. <laughs> Uncle Freddy clasps his hands together in thunderous laughter and he continues to paddle blindly steadily to the pool wall. Dad shoves his brick of money in his pocket before he jumps in, cannonball style. The dollars explode upwards from the wave. Now, oh, your good shoes. Oh. Vince and Lisa laugh with the crowd until they notice Aunt Augie and Dad's money spreading across the entire surface of the pool. Still blinded by her hair, Augie is oblivious as she shoves the money aside. They need to clean this damn pool. I can hear you laughing at me. The crowd notices the pool has filled with money. The crazy Italians are throwing money in the pool. Guests all dressed up for dinner start jumping and diving from every side of the pool, grabbing at the cash as kids scream their heads off. Children come from everywhere, and a couple of parents throw their kids in, the, in to grab the money from the shallow end. One parent holds this kid by the ankles and dips him in to grab the cash while other kids stand in line to be next. Uncle Tony is laughing his head off as he unwraps his stack and he and Catherine count to three before they throw the bills up high and the money flitters down, cascading into the pool as everyone grabs at the floating cash. Several resort employees dive in. Lisa shovels a few bricks of cash down Vince's shirt and pants before shoving him into the pool. Guess now swarming in his wake of the fresh money. Oh, what the hell? Mom rips open her brick and makes a few fake throws before sending the bills cascading over the pool. Dad cheers the loudest as he helps Aunt Augie reach the edge of the pool. I don't remember you were such a graceful swimmer, Aggie. He gives her a towel and then a wet hug until she swats him away with the, with the towel, whipping him across the ass as they laugh like teenagers. Well, Grandma, wherever you are, thanks for bringing us all together. Exterior, outdoor bar, outdoor bar, late night. Marie is sitting at the outdoor bar, keeping a hopeful eye out for her lawn. Observing a pack of bridesmaids at the other end of the bar, the girls flirt with the bartenders in identical cropped tops and blazoned <laughs> with bridesmaid. Vince appears. You think they're bridesmaids? I'm not sure. Maybe you should go for the blonde leader. She's kind of hot. Uh, she'll be like Gumby in bed. Not much depth. Flexible. And always a happy ending. How you doing? I'm happy for Uncle Tony. No sign of Lauren, huh? Not everyone can be a parade marcher, Mayor. She wouldn't have had to be a parade marcher. I just hope she would choose to live her life. With you. Marie nods and gives her a squeeze as he slides the bottle of tequila over to her. Lisa enters the bar and walks over to them as she notices the bridesmaids. Careful, Vince. That blonde looks like she could suck the chrome off a trailer hitch. Lisa poaches Marie's bottle and swigs it down. They are all pretty drunk when Lisa makes an announcement. With my share of the money, I'm going to buy a campground, dykes only, so I can find a girlfriend. Camp Town Ladies, I even have a song. Oh boy, there's a song? Camp Town Ladies, sing the song, dildo, dildo. <laughs> <laughs> they are so hysterical with fits of laughter that they don't see Lauren until after she's already sat down next to Vince, who turns to offer her 
offer a stranger a drink from the bottle and realizes it's her. Marie stares at her in shock as Lauren grabs the bottle from Vince. You look just like that famous actress. Give me that. She sweats the bottle and swings her swigs her shot. When she thuds it back down on the bar, she still refuses to hand it over. Fuck off, Vince. I have to catch up with you drunks. <laughs> Lauren finally looks at Marie. My mother said I shouldn't see you if I can't offer you anything more than before. Mm, your mother is always right. Remember? I have no right to ask you to hide. Marie gently wipes a tear off Lauren's cheek. You don't get it. I'd get in a closet just to be with you. But I don't want you to risk your... Lauren stops her with a passionate kiss. This is me giving you a sign. It's a good one. Lauren takes another long swig and they all laugh again. By this time tomorrow, we'll be family. Not exactly how I had hoped, but still. I like the idea of being your family. They stare at each other while Lisa makes her move to prey on one of the remaining drunk bride, bride, bridesmaids. Vince tries to stop him. Hey. I can't just sit here with those two making goo goo eyes. I'm going to go get lucky. Well, leaves the bridesmaids at the bar until, or else it gets the hose again. That one's so drunk, I could make her think I'm you. Uh, except I shaved this morning. Lisa yanks his ear until he yelps and lets, go, I... lets her go. Lisa marches over to the bridesmaids with Vince trailing behind. Marie and Lauren continue to stare at each other, not knowing what to do next. Wanna walk? I can try. Exterior, beach, night. Marie and Lauren are walking along the dark beach. This feels familiar. It feels right. Except I remember where this walk ends. Maybe there's a reason we're walking it again. Maybe this time we need to get it right. They stop. Marie sadly shakes her head no. Turns out I'm not so good at risk. Me either. What if I told you I can't give you up? I tell you the same thing I told you before. I won't be the cause of your... Happiness? Lauren surprises her with a kiss, and Marie gives in. Please tell me it's gonna end differently. It's gonna end differently. <laughs> <laughs>